Chris and I welcomed our second son, oh, yeah. Zeppelin. That's what's, a good what's daddy's nickname today? Daddy. What's Zeps? Zepsia. I saw us growing into a family I had always dreamed of. I always imagined our life would be full of adventure. I felt like we had the final piece of the puzzle. And I saw this beautiful journey that we were going to go on. And so quickly that journey turned into something different. The tumor in my right boob is cancerous, and then my right lymph node has cancerous cells. Based on the surgeon's, her physical exam of my breast, she has identified it as inflammatory breast cancer. I mean, only 2.4% of breast cancers are inflammatory. This is not something that I see even once a year. This is something that I've seen a handful of times in my career. I've had this silly bump in my boob for so long that it's made up so many different reasons why it wouldn't have been that. You know, it's like when you're breastfeeding, so much changes in your boob all the time. I think breastfeeding allows some plausible deniability. Oh, it's just a galactosil. Oh, I've got this um, little bit of mastitis. Please understand that not every woman who breastfeeds and has mastitis is going to turn out with breast cancer. I hold her in very high esteem, which is easy to do as a snowboarder, but when you get to know her as a person and see her go through these challenges, you just uh, you get humbled by it and inspired. And maybe that's why we're doing things like sharing the story and trying to share these experiences with people because Kimmy's a good example that we can all dig a lot deeper than we think we can. I didn't have any idea the journey I was about to go on. Even though I'd watched my dad go through chemotherapy and I'd watched my mom battle cancer. But when it happens to you, it happens to the person that's witnessed it, it brings everything crashing down. It makes me sad for my boys, but I just know that um, this will give them strength and something to know that they can overcome a lot. The literature suggests that the number of women who get breast cancer under 40 is low, but my personal experience is that it's not that low. When I've been doing this for 26 years, I have so many patients under 40 who have breast cancer. Here I thought being healthy and active would help me avoid breast cancer, when really being healthy and active made me a better patient to go through breast cancer. I knew that my life depended on getting treatment as fast as possible. Chemotherapy is hard. It really does a number on your body. I just need to mark yeah. you on the correct side. All right, the next year is gonna be really shitty, but you not living is not an option. This isn't something I don't feel like I can accomplish or get through. This is just one of those really gnarly mountains. Like the first day I dropped into Alaska, I was somewhat more nervous than when I'm in now. So it's Thursday, December 9th today, and I start chemo on Monday, December 13th. And I got my port put in yesterday. Might even go and shave my head to donate my hair to Locks of Love. I got to a point through this cancer diagnosis where I didn't feel like I could do anything but share what I was going through because that was my survival technique. Over the course of the last few years, I've really learned how to become more vulnerable. 
it brought a bigger range of experiences to my life that I never thought I would be able to let go of. Vulnerability causes transformation. We need all our cells to do their job so our bodies are working right. When someone finds a cancer party in their body, they definitely want to get it out. In the early 2000s, I was at a contest at Sierra at Tahoe that was called the Triple Crown. And Boarding for Breast Cancer had a booth set up with fake boobs on the table that were designed to show you how to check for breast cancer. And I remember touching those fake boobs, kind of giggling, kind of being insecure. You know, I was like a teenager, didn't want people to think I was weird, I felt embarrassed. And yet I was kind of like trying to shovel in the information of how it felt so that I could know myself. But I didn't really feel like I was exposed to a lot of knowledge about how to check for breast cancer, except for through boarding for breast cancer. So flash forward, we're 22 years later, that memory is still so cemented in my brain, and they were really my introduction to being aware of what my body might go through. And my relationship with them has really taught me how important it is to educate our youth, to not be embarrassed about our bodies, to embrace what it feels like, know what your boobs feel like, because if changes happen, you need to know what that baseline is like. Patients need to feel comfortable saying, you know, I don't think this is right. And that's kind of what you did, because you'd had a lump for a little bit, didn't think it was anything, but then things changed. And suddenly you said, something's wrong, this is not right. And that gut feeling about your own body is super important to pay attention to. That's what these organizations are designed to do, is to help gather information and provide tools for all of us to be able to be better advocates for ourselves. Okay. You have everything you need, dear? Okay. How do we shut the cancer party down? How? Well, I have to keep going to the doctor. The more I go to the doctor with the cancer party, the faster I'll get better. She hugged you and kissed you? She's like, she's only gone for six months. She'll be back really soon. Even though you were so young, my goal with you was to make sure you were alive to take care of your kids. My first three treatments, I had a really drastic weight loss. I was losing 10 times every chemo treatment, and it made me feel like I was dying on the inside. I couldn't eat, I couldn't hardly drink water. My whole body was just crumbling. It felt like I was decaying or rotting. From day five to day 12 after my chemo treatment, I was just destroyed. My skin hurt. I was exhausted. I could hardly leave the house. You okay? Did that hurt really bad? And I felt like the reason that I was able to make it through that whirlwind of treatments was because of the community that came forward to support us. If we wouldn't have had the support of so many friends, so many brands, so many family members coming forward to be there for us and to tell us that we were gonna get through it, maybe I would have lost hope. Happy family, happy family, happy family. Happy family. Happy family. This journey is not meant to be done alone. It's meant to be done with a community. Car seats, check. Passports, check. Okay. Chris called out of nowhere and he said, buddy, I got this really crazy idea. And you know, I just, I thought about it and I thought it might be nice. I'm like, Chris, what's the idea? I just don't want you to think I'm gonna think you're like a bad guy if you can't do it or anything. It's just a crazy idea. I'm like, Chris, you got, just tell me what the idea is. I left for my sixth treatment and Chris gave me permission to like pack all the bags for me and the kids for a warm weather vacation. No, she'll never ever guess because I yeah. have her convinced we're going somewhere warm. And then he's like, no, 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 she's just going to be done with chemo and I know it's a little tricky. I'm like, I think it'd be great, man. Get her up in the mountains with the people and like her family. Like this would be great. Let's do this. Yeah, we're not going to the beach. We're going to the snow. 
There's a lot of logistics packing for a family of four without your wife knowing, and my uh, packing skills are not quite to kidney standards. Does that look like a new hat? Helmet, helmet, goggles. I can't find those, good call. Where does she keep those? And more than anything, he really wanted me to pack all of my medicines so he didn't have to be responsible for that. She's not going to want to wait two more days to see you and the kids, right? I know, that's the crux here. So Donna Carpenter comes down to Southern California for my last treatment, and we had plans to meet up. And she encourages me to come home with her. So Donna has offered to fly me back to Mammoth but not until Saturday. She's like, I would love to have like a celebration for you down here. Like maybe we can do, um, where she wants to take me to the spa on. Yes! Donna. Now I hope I don't forget anything. <laughs> this was her last treatment. We thought it would be cool to do something special. She's really missed snowboarding, missed that community. And even if she can't ride too much because she's not feeling great, this is still snowboarding and all the people that love her. She's coming! She's coming, quick, quick! As we get off the airplane, everybody's already at the airport. And there's Donna. Kids are running up to me and Chris is like, and... Oh, hi! Hi! <laughs> you're still not gonna have any idea what's happening, but you're getting back on this plane and we're going to Bald Base. Oh my! My chin was on the floor, I had no words. The whole family's coming. Donna has been scheming for a lot for a long time. I couldn't even react. I didn't even know what to say because I was so caught off guard. I was so surprised. You've got to keep her in Encinitas until Saturday. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to keep her in Encinitas until Saturday? Still can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> in my head, I was like, can I do this? And at the same point, it was like the most invigorating feeling knowing that we were going back to winter. It's 8 a.m. Snooze my alarm and I lay in bed. People I don't know and all my friends. Just to feel the sense of normalcy that we are traveling as a family and I could kind of escape my diagnosis. Even temporarily, it felt so invigorating to feel like we were going somewhere as a family. Gotta, gotta stop comparing myself. I would not be here if I didn't have the love of the mountains and snowboarding. <laughs> mountains have always been my escape, but now I'm realizing it's not an escape. It's where I feel like I'm my truest self, and being connected is what gives me the energy to live. The girls are seeing the magazines, but they're these shared experiences that we get to have, whether it's at Bald Face or on a fishing trip or mountain biking or however you find it with your friends and your family. That was really fun. That connective tissue is like the mycelium of our human experiment that we're on right now. And I just know this is the best healing that we can do. But I believe you're who and you're where you're supposed to be. So don't hate yourself, change society ultimately what I learned through this process, that it doesn't matter what I look like. I don't have to have boobs. I don't have to have hair. I can still be an amazing mom, an amazing wife, an amazing athlete. The physical body can go through all these transformations, but ultimately my spirit is still inside fighting so hard to be passionate and to live. My flies, 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 flies. But I really feel like there's so much more that I want to accomplish. Flies, flies.